Oldie School Lesson Professor Frank Mishkin was an oldie school college instructor. His world was still one of the last century when men were men and seemingly ran the world. He was of that breed that refuses to see that the world changes and tries like the little Dutch boy to stem the flood of change with a finger. For years, he dominated the stark, wood-panelled lecture hall, sending his bushy-eyed glare across the multitude of confused youthful faces. This year, due to medical issues which made the incontinence measures necessary, he was particularly fierce. He was especially more so with his growing population of outspoken young women. Day after day, they endured his diatribes. His class was necessary to pass for most and as such they were at his mercy. One fine day, he awoke from a not-so-deep sleep after grading papers, to discover to his further fury, that his housekeeper had mislaid his medicine and that he was running a bit behind time. He was forced to make the rather uncomfortable decision to resort to adult diapers. Determined not to be diminished in the eyes of his cringing class, he was very cagey as he slipped into the drugstore as quick as possible and slunk to the appropriate aisle. Pulling his hat down firmly over his eyes, he made his way to the counter and very tersely dealt with the cashier who was a bit tongue-tied in seeing him. After racing across campus so as not to be tardy, he was extremely flustered to find he was almost five minutes late. He spent the entire lecture seated behind the lectern so as not to lose his control. Finally, with the class filing out, he could make a dash for the back room and take care of business. He rips into the packaging and strips down to take care of this as quickly as possible. Having not worn adult diapers before, he is unsure if the strange way they feel is entirely right, but with no time to lose, he rushes back into his noticeably tighter pants. Back in the classroom, the students are filling the available seats. Somewhere towards the rear of the room a very nervous girl tries to hide her giggles behind her three-ring binder. The task is made much worse by the rather round-bottomed figure that appears at the front of the room. He looks like a baby who has made a full nappy, she thinks to herself and a plan is born. With notes like small silver fish, darting among the female population, the idea spreads and matures. After the final lecture of the day, a young woman is waiting outside the lecture hall. I thought, since you look to have had a hard day, I would bring you a latte professor sir, she intones in soothingly submissive tones. His only response is a grunt that vaguely sounds like thanks. Before he is halfway back to his car, he feels the need to sit down. Must be coming down with something he thinks as he finishes the last dregs of the latte as the world goes dark. Upon waking, several hours later, he is startled to find himself in a strange living room. His legs and hands are numb making him unable to stand or use the telephone. His best effort is a slow crawl whereupon he realises that he is clad only in his adult diaper and a half-t-shirt in pastel pink. A pacifier fills his mouth with a ribbon which is tied behind his head to hold it in place. Just then, he hears a young girl speaking in the next room. Yes, I understand. I have been babysitting for three years now and you can trust me. Bye, the phone clicks into the cradle. Soon after, a girl of no more than fifteen years came into the room. Hi Widdle Boo Boo. How is baby little Tum Tum? Is oh hungrous, she coos in that voice that people reserve for talking down to others' progeny. MNF. Ah, he grunts around the pacifier. Don sent sent to worries it'll binky boo. Your big sissies at the sorority left me full instructions and plenty of nappies and formula. They will be back very soon, and until then I will watch oh, she croons while tickling his prodigious belly. Half an hour later, there is a ring at the door and the student cashier pops into the room beaming smiles. Hugh oh idle baby sister. Guess what I got, she bubbles. With a chill, he recognises her and in his anger, fear and embarrassment, he forgets himself. With a small giggle, she shakes her head and kneeling down to get eye to eye, says, idle Francine has gone we in her DID, oh needs a change I tick. As if a signal has gone off, Half a dozen more big sissies surround him and in a flash have him on his back on a changing mat, legs in the air and completely naked. With a flurry of soft hands, 
warm and wet clothes and not a few giggles, he finds himself changed into a fresh diaper and a frilly pink baby girl dress. His new dress barely makes it halfway down his shaved belly and does not even come close to covering the crinkly plastic pink and purple princess pants. Lacy edged, white baby socks with pink boughs finish off the outfit. As the young woman is putting them on his, still numb feet, she looks up shyly and smiles and tips up a pink hand mirror to show him his shaven face and strawberry blonde wig with long Shirley Temple curls which he had not noticed up to now. His outrage and anger evaporate in a second and large tears of girlish shame begin rolling down his face as he sobs quietly in his pacified helplessness. His nemesis, the cashier student materializes before him instantly with a lacy hanky and a poo bear bottle. I think it'll boo-boo is hungry girls. Is oh, she softly with a mocking smile playing across her face. It's all he can do to nod, all pretense of hope of escape gone. Filled with submissive despair, he allows her to rock him with his head in her lap while she feeds him. It's all going to be very different from now on, she explains. You see, we all have documented pictorial evidence of what a big baby girl you really are. He listens as visions of his domineering mother begin to surface in his mind and merge with his newfound mummy. We will swear not to breathe a word of today's transformation, but you must change your ways toward women. It's a new world my child and this is only the beginning.